What you doing? <laughs> Hello, my little channel people. <laughs> Welcome to the channel. So today is part four of my experience. Um, over there, up there. So, uh, this is the second time I'm doing this video because it kept getting interrupted with spam phone calls. Then I went to check the video after I was on it 22 minutes. And the sound was so separated from the video, I had to just delete it, which was sad because, you know, telling it for the second time, I don't know if the emotions will be there like they were, <laughs> but they probably will, but here we go, round two. Um, first, I gotta say, like, again, um, I have had, I have been um, a very, or I was a very, well, I am, <laughs> a sickly uh, person. I, um, it started at the age of four, four to five, beginning of five. Um, I was very, very asthmatic, bronchoasthma, and when I get any type of cold or bug going around, which I had no immune system, or if I did too much running, or if it was damp out, and this is Florida, so it's always damp, um, you know, I couldn't lay on the floor, I couldn't uh, play with long-haired cats. I couldn't, you know, run that much because I'd start wheezing. But the worst episodes would be when I caught a bug or a cold or something and would get real congested. Then it would go into my lungs and close off my airway. And I had it so bad. So, so, so terribly bad. And yes, for start picking up cigarettes totally wrong thing to do i know i know but um i would you know my dad was a minister and we traveled all over preaching different churches going to different states and they would all they had a healing ministry and i have seen people get healed of things and my dad was a fiery pentecostal preacher just to tell you like it is. And, um, you know, I would always wonder when I was so sick, why didn't I get healed? Why was I so sick? You know, because when you're a small child and you see miracles and you're being told you can be healed and you get prayed for over and over and over and the healing don't come, you're little and you wonder why. You know, so I would be heartbroken, you know, five, six, seven years old and be so wheezy and I couldn't even talk because I didn't have the air to. I'd rock back and forth and back of my lungs back there, it hurt so bad. My mom would have to rub them, you know, put pressure there and rub it. Because I was so tight, it was the working, trying to work to get air. You know, they'd always have to point a fan at me, and I'd have to rock, because that pushed the air in. I didn't know that. I just knew that's what I did to get air. And one time it got so bad that, because back then, you know, people didn't know, mom and dad didn't know I could die from it, you know. And not that much was known about asthma or bronchoasthma or, you know, all the causes and stuff like that. It just wasn't, it wasn't out there. So I would go night after night after night. And I would, I would be to the point to where I was just barely getting air in my lungs. And, you know, I'd turn such a pale color. And I'd get to that point, Mom goes, no, nope, got to get her in. Well, Dad would finally cave. But it took days to get to that point, you know. 
And I went through this for years. On well, one time it got so bad to where when they got me there, I was out because of the lack of oxygen. So they brought me back, got me breathing again, and the doctor told my dad, he said, you better not wait till it gets like this again or you might not have your daughter. He said, you almost lost her this time. So from that point, my dad started to get me in a lot sooner when I'd get the episodes. But you gotta remember, I'd get these episodes all the time. So my mom and dad were always having to die emergency room visit bills, ER bills, because I was sick all the time. And he, I live in Florida, so it's always rainy. It's always damp. I don't care if it's hot or not. You know, and um, then we would go to other states where it would be snowing or cold, you know, and I'd be so sick. And I just wonder, God, why don't you heal me? You heal these other people. I don't understand why you don't heal me. So I would be heartbroken. And when I was there, I did not go through a tunnel. I didn't see no bright light. I didn't float above my body. It was nothing like that. I believe I was there body and soul. I believe I was taken. And I just woke up there. I was just, boop. then I was there. And um, I don't know really what caused me to be there. If something happened to me, you know. Now, with all the asthma problems, it did damage my heart. Because waiting so long, it did, without oxygen, it did. Uh, that's why I have a lot of heart problems now, they think. Uh, that also scarred my left lung, so I have that. Um, so I don't know exactly. I do know my body was there. I am pretty sure. <laughs> I'll tell you why. When I was seeing that floor and that big angel and everything, everything was a bright, bright, bright light. I mean, just a bright light. And when I didn't go from like A to B walking or, you know, I didn't physically get myself from A to B. I was looking at that floor. I was looking at the angel. I was thinking all these things, seeing things in my peripheral vision. And the next thing I know, boom, I'm in another room. And it wasn't really a room. It was like when... um Israel was in the desert and God said to build that small temple or whatever for him, you know. And the walls were made out of large, humongous, large tapestry. It wasn't curtains and it wasn't walls. It was huge tapestry, bright colors and everything. Now in this room, the light was different. Hang on. Hi guys. Oh, thing chicken. All right, there's a electric guy next door. I hope he isn't gonna bang around too loudly. I think I left off where I said I didn't have to go from A to B. It would just one experience and then boom I was in the other room and I couldn't call it a room because it wasn't walls it was like tapestry like it wasn't curtains it wasn't walls but it was it was it was all together but it was made out of tapestry it reminded me, if you ever seen the documentary, where they put up the first temple, very first temple. And it really wasn't a temple, it was uh, 
the house of God where he resided to be with uh, Israel. And um, when Moses was up on the mount. So if you read how he coursed the air, how God wanted the dimensions and everything to be built and the ceremonies and everything, what they were supposed to be, do, that's how these tapestry walls were. It was all closed in by tapestry. And the lighting was way different. Um, the lighting in this room was more pure warmth. Um, you could almost feel it. It was like like when you have a campfire, that golden color, you know, that's the way it looked all the just all that golden pure golden color and you could actually feel the light um i hope i'm not repeating myself <laughs> but because i've done done this video once so i forget where i just left off but when i was there i was thinking oh my goodness i must look a mess look at my hair what, you know it felt like my hair was all bushed out and there's your vanity. But then all of a sudden, something happened. Uh, the presence in that tapestry room was intensified so much that I drop down. I fell, I fell on my knees and on my bottom and I was on the floor and I felt, had this feeling rush over me like, who am I? What am I? I am, I am just felt so unworthy. I felt that I was like a piece of dirt on the ground. That's the way I felt. I felt so small. Um, and you gotta remember, I had bottled up all this hurt for so many years. You know, being, going through what I went through from the time I was, you know, four, almost five years old. And just being so sick all my life. And, um, when I felt that presence, I knew who it was. My dad likes to argue with me and goes, no, I think it was God. I said, no, it wasn't. I said, just because I didn't see him. And you got to remember, this whole event was, was based on feeling the inner person. It wasn't based on what I could see or what I could, what I was experiencing what did this look like? What did that look like? This was all focused in on the inside man. Who I am inside. What what makes me my soul. It was based on my soul. And when I was just feeling all this and how little and insignificant I was, it's like my inner person, my inner being, my inner spirit and soul was just ripped out of there. It was ripped out of my body. It was just hanging. It was suspended way over to the, to the right in front. Did I see him ever? No. Didn't see him but I felt him. And it's like, I knew who, who it was. And you gotta still remember every thought and every like question or every thing that was going through my mind 
he knew. And when I was suspended, okay, my spirit being and everything was suspended over here, right front. Every time I tell this part, man, I get overcome. But it was, it was like I was engulfed and I was surrounded encased. I'm about ready to go. Hang on, guys. Anyway, I was encased in this love, in this, I can't even call it love because it's so much more. You know, it's like I was telling mom, there is nothing to compare this to. There's nothing on this earth humanly possible. There is not a word for this. There isn't. But I was encased and that my spirit being and my soul was just encased, surrounded engulfed um, poured into the only word I can say is love but take that times the biggest number you can possibly think of and times it again and again and again and again I told my mom, I said, take the deepest love that you ever felt for somebody and just keep times in it by the biggest number you can think of. When I tell you there's not a word for this, there's not a word for this. It doesn't exist. Because, now you gotta remember, all this was um, like a telepathy type thing. It wasn't a vocal thing. You know, everything was spoken through, through the mind. It wasn't spoken through the mouth. At least not my experience. But, and you also got to remember, I was there in body. Got to remember my body's over here. Okay, my soul and spirit's over here. And I was taken. You know, I was taken. Out of my life, I was just taken. And when my spirit being is just engulfed in that, that love and that supernatural pouring of what I call love explosion because there's not the love does love does the word love just does not fit just uh, just doesn't fit it was so much more and I was starting to say to him something And I would love to tell you what it was, <laughs> and I will. But I don't want to go where I can't upload this video because this is a message for someone to know there is something so much more. I know Jesus was there. I know Jesus was pouring himself into me. I know he was healing a heartache that I had. Maybe not more that I've collected over the years now, but what I had then. You know, and you gotta remember this happened back in, I don't know. To, I can't even put the date on it. You know, because 
like I said, I was taken in body. I wasn't taken. I wasn't taken in sleep. I don't wasn't taken in death. I was just there, and that's another thing. There is no time there. You know, there there is no no concept of time. There's also I did not think at all the whole time I was there. And I can't tell you how long I was there. It could have been one minute. It could have been a whole day. It could have been, you know, however long it was. Um, I can't tell you how long I was there. I don't know. I can't give you details of a direct time. And you say, well, Sherry, that's kind of funny. No, because I was taken in body. It just felt like it was an everyday occurrence to me. When I was there, I had the feeling of home. I did not think of here at all. And that'll come later, too. But I didn't, you know, trying to explain that when I got told something you know but anyway I'm going to continue all this on part five but please just know I would never lie to you because it wouldn't be lying to you it'd be lying to myself I am telling you the truth of what happened You know, and if you want a date, it either happened in two, the year of 2008, 2009. You know, I can't give you a specific date. I know I, the next day or something, I was telling Dad, Dad, nothing else matters. I was telling him. He goes, well, what do you mean? I said, nothing else matters. I said, Jesus is the only thing that matters. He said, what happened? And I told him the story. And he cried. And I said, it doesn't matter. And what's so funny? I said, it doesn't matter if we lose everything. Jesus is the only one that matters. Well, I'll tell you this. You better be careful what you say. Because within two years, we lost everything. But I can say we still had Jesus. And we haven't turned it back on him yet. Sometimes I get upset. Sometimes I tell God to come have a seat because I got to talk to him. <laughs> you know? So, Jesus, please, I need you. I need to talk to you about some things. You know, I'm upset and I don't understand. And that's just what makes us human. We don't understand. You know, I didn't understand why I went through so much as a child. I don't understand why my heart's damaged, my lungs are damaged. And it got to that point. But what I can tell you is this happened. And so much more happened. And we'll get to that. But like I said, I'm going to take my time with this because I want you to know what I experienced. And I want you to know it's the truth. It's like Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Trying to tell his disciples what he knows about heaven and his Father. I tell you the truth. You know, and that, that I always wondered why Jesus kept saying that tell you the truth I tell you the truth and it didn't come as a revelation until lately within the last week and I told mom I know why he kept saying that I know why he kept saying those that over and over now when he would say something to them I tell you the truth that's because he wanted them to grab the essence of what he was trying to say as make it make it as firm as concrete his word were, was as concrete 
It was that firm. It was that true. That's why he kept saying that. It's like he wanted to shake him. And I tell you the truth. You know, and to make what you're you're experiencing and what you know that you know that you know that you know that you know. I know what happened to me. I know what's here. You know, people may question it. And they may say, no, Sherry, you know, you making that up. Or you think, how in the world would you think something like this? How would you make something like this up? And it gets deeper. But anyway, I'm going to leave you there for now. Because I am already at 25 minutes or something. <laughs> and I do want this to upload. And it will take a while. So, please come back. And it should take me, I think, over about another video. Unless I get too excited and start really preaching to you. <laughs> Okay, guys, I love you so much, and I'll see you on my next one, I hope. God bless you. Bye. I love you bunches.